In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first project using Big Picture without any hassle. This video is part of our effort to deliver the best quality learning experience for all the users of Jira, Confluence and all of their apps. And if you want to support us, then consider subscribing or you might also want to reach out to us for paid services, which we do offer in all of those areas. And now back to creating projects using Big Picture. So if you have Big Picture, whether a trial version or maybe already a paid version, this is probably the screen that you're familiar with. You go to apps, you go to Big Picture, and then you land here in the home area where all of the boxes are available. And then you may be wondering, what is a box? What is a project? How do I start things over here? I'm not sure what to do. Right, because there are several different ways you can actually get things rolling. But I'm going to show you today the easiest one that you can use so that you don't actually have to spend a lot of time learning all the tricks over here, all the nuances regarding the boxes, but I will come back to this a little bit later. So before I leave this screen, which is something that we will definitely do, I just want to mention that if you want to go like the standard way of creating uh, the boxes, you can just hit the add the plus button over here, add new button and fill this dialog, or you can also expand this section. And there is kind of a wizard that is more or less a new thing. Well, it's not brand new, but has several months. Uh, is several months old, old already, which will also help you create what you want to create. But what we want to do is we actually go want to go to a simple Jira project view. So let's imagine we don't have big picture, even though we do, and we are just visiting our Jira project, which we are managing. Okay. So in this project, if you have big picture app installed on your Jira instance, you will see the big picture section appear over here. And if you hit this section. And if for this project you don't have anything on the big picture side created yet, this is the screen that you're going to get. And with this screen, you can really easily get started working on the data that you have inside of this Jira project that I'm currently looking at, which is build a website project. Okay, so we want to build a website. Uh, we have some tasks, epics, user stories inside. Now we want to start cracking on it using big picture, right? So we go over here and we choose which type of a box we want to create. As you can see, there are several types available over here. Altogether, I think there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight types currently, which is pretty good because not so long ago, I remember that we only had three over here. So we had to do some creative, uh, work, creative workarounds. Uh, to be able to um, work with these kind of projects in different way. Now it's a little bit easier, but uh, you also need to kind of know what all of those different box types, because this is essentially what they are, do. And what you can see over here is just which kind of views are included in them. So if you click on those, you will see that nothing really changes. So all of them have, have all of the views enabled. Uh, therefore, it doesn't really give you any kind of insight regarding what's hidden inside the configuration of those boxes without taking a look from the administrative perspective at the box defin type definition, really, right? So um, what you can do, though, is look at the names of the box types, right? So if I know that my project is going to be maintained in the agile fashion, then I'm probably going to go with this one, right? If I want to manage the waterfall type project, let's go with classic project. If it's hybrid, somewhere between waterfall and agile, let's go with hybrid. Uh, then you have uh, the project for less metallurgy. You have a project over here or a box type really for safe metallurgy over here. You have a standard program box, uh, which is actually, uh, sorry, th it's this one because this one is just a copy I've, I've created while doing some experiments. So, and of course you have a portfolio too. So there are different types you can choose from. I'm going to go with Agile because I know that I have epics and user stories in my project. So I'll just do that. I click start working, I wait a moment, I wait a moment and there we go, right? My project is already pre-populated with data as I, as I mentioned and look what happened. My epics are automatically parents for the user stories that are assigned to them. So I already get my initial hierarchy, my initial structure of, of the tasks or, or issues inside of here. Why? Because I chose a proper type of the box. 
if I would choose a box that doesn't give me this kind of hierarchy automatically because of the box settings, then of course maybe it wouldn't be as clean talking about the view as I have over here. So that is why even though this is the easiest way to start working with projects uh, using Big Picture, this is not the best one, of course, because very rarely the simplest solution is the best solution. Actually, it happens, but not in this case. Not in this case because boxes have many, many different settings, and some of those settings are amazingly creative and important to use. So without knowing what settings are actually enabled here in my, in my Agile box, I don't really know which kind, uh, which, what types of functionality of the box, of the tool, of big picture I'm actually using and what kind of functionalities I'm missing on, right? Because there might be some things that you can just toggle in the, in the box type configuration that will change the way the boxes or the, this box in particular works, but uh, it will be a tremendous advantage for me, for my team, for uh, my whole project, for example. So I always advocate that it's actually worth knowing how the stuff works in the background. So you don't have to be an expert in it, but it's, it's, it's at least worth knowing what are the options so that later on when you're doing the project and you're kind of feeling that you're missing something here, you would like to do some, some stuff differently, you might remember, ah, there was this setting. I remember Tom said that there was this setting that allowed me, for example, to present boxes on my Gantt chart. So how do I do that? Hmm, I don't remember, but then you can go and search for the video. You can go and visit the, the courses that we have available and uh, find that stuff, right? So um, I guess what I'm saying is that it's here for the purpose of using it by basic users. So if you're a beginner over here in Big Picture, absolutely, um, without any doubt, doubt, use this functionality. But if you want to really uh, use the 100% um, power of the tool um, as such as Big Picture, which is a very powerful tool, if you ask me, then I think it's worth exploring what's, what's actually underneath it and understanding what are different box types, how are they configured, how to configure your own box types so that you can create custom ones that are perfectly uh, fit into your needs, and your requirements and your, your company's way of managing projects and the processes around project management. So um, there are different ways to explore this. You can, for example, sign up for our free course for Big Picture. It's available on our website, so go and explore that. If you want to learn a lot more, then of course you can reach out to us and talk about how we can support you in your journey in Big Picture. We, have, we are actually the only partner in the world that has a dedicated video course for it, like the premium video course covering all the functionalities which you can go through at, at your own time, at your own pace, because it's based on our video platform. You can also hire us to lead the live training of Big Picture for your project managers, program managers, product owners, right? All of the people that will be working heavily here in this tool. And I think personally, that this is a very important thing to have the people that will be heavy users of Big Picture really trained properly so that, you know, if you're paying a lot of money for the tool, get the benefits that you're paying for because otherwise, where's the sense in that really? So having said that, uh, I, I still want to emphasize that this functionality available over here is for you to use. Um, I, I want to mention one thing because if you, uh, if you actually do uh, create a project using this functionality. This, uh, the, this, this box that you will create in the background um, has a limitation kind of, has a limitation uh, which basically means that the content of this box is restricted to this project. So build a website is a Jira project. Uh, now Big Picture has created a box on the level of Big Picture called build the website as well. And now they are connected kind of one to one, right? But it's not very flexible. So if you want to be more flexible, then you want to explore more options around the scope definition of the box. And this is again, something that we cover in our, uh, in our training sessions, in our courses. So if you want to explore that again, reach out to us, we will be happy to share this information.
All right, this is all. Now you know how to start working with Big Picture without any hassle. This will be uh, definitely um, a good starting point. And from here, you can keep on learning. We have lots of uh, videos on our channel that will take you through different functionalities of, of Big Picture. Some of them are pretty obvious. Some of them are really quite interesting and most of the users never, know, never knew about them before we, we told them uh, about these amazing fun functionalities in Big Picture. So I think it's worth exploring. And uh, I hope that uh, you will have fun using the tool. If you, if you found this video interesting, then consider giving it a like, consider subscribing to the channel or leaving the comments so that other users have it easier finding this kind of content and learning from it. And that's it. I'm not going to say anything more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos.